Uh, today, we're going to talk about the Jaguar Project 7. Uh, 2016 Jaguar Project, uh, it's an F-Type Project 7. We bought it in November, purchased it on Bring a Trailer. Uh, another, that's the second time that I've participated in a car auction and the second time that I bought a Jaguar XV Project. So uh, I'm glad they're done making them for the moment. We normally shoot these videos while we're riding in the car driving down the road and uh, doing the drive experience and all. But if uh, you've seen or heard a Project 7 before, you'll understand why I'm doing the audio sitting here at this chair. So let's talk about the Project 7. Uh, so Jaguar has a division called the uh, SVO Division, Special Vehicle Operations Division. And one of their first projects was the Jaguar Project 7. Uh, the Project 7 is a heritage car that was created uh, to celebrate the seven wins for Jaguar for Le Mans back several decades ago. Uh, the car itself is a heritage car that was built to reflect the Jaguar D-Type, which is one of the most beautiful cars ever in the world and a very winning car for Jaguar. Uh, you can tell it by the, although it is a, it is a Jaguar F-Type, there are a, a tremendous amount of changes to this car. Uh, it's certainly not an SVR even or a uh, Jaguar F-Type. There are, there are a lot of differences to it. Uh, to make it that unique car that Jaguar was trying to uh, achieve. The, one of the main things that you notice as soon as you see the car is the, the hump behind the driver. Uh, that, in addition to the rondelles, the circles that you see on the side of the car and on the back of the car um, are a direct homage to the Jaguar D-Type. And it does give it a very sporty, racy look that definitely draws a lot of attention. Uh, the next thing would be that convertible top that it comes with that you probably will never see on an F-Type uh, a Project 7 if you see them out in the wild. Why? Because the top, one, the car is made to be a roadster. The top was kind of an afterthought. And the top is not... Uh, Hate to be, I know I'm biased, but uh, the top isn't the finest piece of engineering, I would have to say. It does its job. It's uh, beautiful. It's made of glass and carbon fiber. It's got a big rear window and two corner windows and then a fabric top. Uh, very difficult to put together. It comes in two beautiful bags, but it takes, gosh, it might take 10, 15 minutes to get it together at times because it doesn't seem like everything hooks up quite like it should. That could be specific to my car or it could be kind of the information that I got was that uh, it's kind of a common issue with all the cars. Uh, it looks pretty cool with the top on it. I like how the straps go to the back of the car, the, the tent, that whole tension and keep the top taut and it has kind of a look like a Porsche Boxster Spider. Uh, it's a cool look. It is not entirely waterproof, and it's not entirely windproof, and it's not insulated. So it is, it's not something that you would ride around in all the time if it were very cold outside. Although if it is hot, it does help keep the air conditioning in, so there is that. But that's not what the Project 7 is for, is it? Uh, it's 575 horsepower. The torque is over 500. I think it's 510 or so, something of that nature. Um, and you can absolutely tell. Uh, I think that 575 may be the highest horsepower for Jags up until that point. Um, it's rear wheel drive, which is interesting because the F-Type R's, the later versions, and the SVR are all all wheel drive. And they did that for safety reasons because the car is a complete animal. The uh, traction control it does have traction control, is practically non-existent on this car, even though it's got 80% uh, tighter spring rates in the rear, 8% in the front, uh, it's kind of a mess. The thing is, 
it, it's just uh, so lively in the rear end. Uh, you can spin the tires first, second, third gear just driving down the road. Uh, and it's the noise. And that's what this whole car is all about more than anything else. The first thing that someone's going to tell you after they've heard an F-Type uh, Project 7 go by is it's all about that noise. Uh, it's a ridiculous roar. I mean, it is just, it's even more than the, the uh, um, XKRS GT that we've got or the Project 8. This car is just a celebration of sound. Uh, the engineering was excellent for the exhaust on it. It literally is the one thing that really stands out. If you're driving through a downtown area and there's tall buildings, you're going to get some looks. Now you're gonna get all the looks. It's gonna stop everybody if they're not running from cover because they think they're under fire, <laughs> which kind of happens. Uh, they're, they're certainly going to see you for better or worse. Uh, I love the celebration of that. You can turn it down a bit by pushing the uh, exhaust, active exhaust button, turning it off. But uh, why would you do that? Then you might as well just drive a regular F-Type, right? Uh, so that's that's the the craziest thing about this car. Every time you shift, you get this crescendo of pops. I think JM said that uh, there was like five pops. Oh boy, I've heard 10 or more. And it does it all the time and it does it every time. And it just makes me get a goal makes Melissa cringe just a little bit, but uh, uh, I think she gets it. Uh, it's not something you want to take on a long road trip, I don't believe. Maybe Harry would probably argue with that, but one, there's no, let's talk about uh, practicality. Uh, there's no luggage space. It does have a boot in the back, but once you have the two large bags where you have the tops inside them, and again, the bags are beautifully stitched and they say Project 7 on them. They're very nice, but uh, once you put those in there, there's hardly any room for anything else, and there's certainly no room uh, up front with the driver and the passenger. So it's going to be short trips in the Project 7. And I tend to do that anyways because uh, I pick my days for the weather, and I don't want to get caught out in the rain with it. Okay, uh, let's talk about the usability of this car. Uh, it the seats are excellent. There's a ton of adjustment in them. It definitely is the best of both worlds. It's kind of the old school charm, but they definitely brought some of the technology in. I've even heard some complaints that uh, it's not really necessary to have all the adjustments, but this is a Jaguar and the seats are beautiful and it should be comfortable. It's actually a GT. This is not a track car. It's not something that's going to compete with a GT3 RS or anything like that. Probably an Aston Martin Roadster would it be its closest competitor, uh, but those aren't near as special, are they? Uh, because the Jaguar uh, Project 7, there are 250 in the world, 50 in the United States. I think there's two or three white ones, uh, which is the one that we've got now. And so it's every time you take it out, there are people that are going to see it, and it may be the only one they ever see in their life. And I kind of dig that uh, kind of rarity. That's why we put together the what I believe is the Jaguar's rarest modern collection with the XKRS GT, the Jaguar Project 7, and the Jaguar Project 8, all in matching colors. Uh, it would be like a museum type situation, I guess, where you would have them all three displayed, which is what I do in my garage. But then I go out, I drive them all, I get them dirty, I, I've got, I put a ton of PPF. The Project 7 is 100% covered in PPF. Uh, every little square inch of carbon and paint is protected. Then it's all ceramic coated because I drive the car. Uh, we bought this in November on Bring a Trailer and we received it a couple weeks later. It immediately went into Corsair Detail for about two weeks worth of PPF, about $12,000 worth of PPF, but it's worth it because now you can drive a car that's arguably worth a couple hundred thousand dollars and is basically irreplaceable, but you can jump out and take it down the interstate or take it on the back roads and not worry so much about it. Uh, and that's, that's what this car is about. I have friends that have these cars and they've got 
100, 200, 300 miles on them. And when you see them on the auctions, that's typically the example you see. Uh, I don't see the point. These cars are driver cars. They were made to be driven. All the passion and everything. It shows when the car's in motion, not when, not when it's a static display. So uh, those cars have to get out there. I have no idea what the gas mileage is on this car. I think I've seen it on the car, say it's 14 or 16 miles a gallon. I would be amazed if you get that because you're always driving it in dynamic mode. You've always got it in sport and you've always got the active exhaust on and you're constantly modulating the uh, accelerator pedal to get that definitive noise out of it. There's a lot of other changes that Jaguar did with this car, uh, including like the suspension. It's got new uh, steering knuckles, I think it's suspension knuckles, steering knuckles, I don't know, that's what they called them. Um, it's 80% tighter in the rear end, 8% tighter for the suspension in the front end. Uh, it's got carbon ceramic brakes, huge carbon ceramic brakes. You're never gonna overheat them. You're never gonna run out of brakes. These things are massive, and uh, they, they do an excellent job of bringing that car to a stop. Uh, but you, you're always downshifting so, or upshifting, so I really don't use them near as much as you normally would in a regular car. Visibility is excellent out of this car because uh, you're always driving with the top down. There's nothing to block it except for the, the edges of the windshield. Other than that, you can see all the way around it. It has a great backup camera if you need that. It's got proximity uh, proximity alerts, front and rear, um, so there's uh, no problem with visibility or whatnot. It is missing some creature comforts, which you find a little weird for a car that sold new for $175,000. Uh, I don't think there's heated seats nor cooled seats. The steering wheel is not heated, and I haven't seen Homelink on this car either. Uh, now that I think about it, and there's a few other things that uh, kind of come up as you're as you're driving the car. But again, they didn't have them with the D-type, did they? So uh, if this is a heritage car, maybe that's why they don't have them now. The uh, technology is better than what's in the XKRS GT. It is a uh, wireless Bluetooth, and so you can use your phone audio and your telephone with it, although the apps don't display on the center screen. It does have a lot of functionality in itself, uh, but uh, not, of course it's a, gosh, it's a 2016, it's a seven, at least a seven to eight year old car now. So I guess that's understandable. Uh, acceleration, it's zero to 60 in under four seconds. I mean, this car is like supercar fast. But I don't know how anyone does it because the loose end's so rare that there's no way you're getting enough traction to pull that off. Must be under track conditions with sticky tires, which I don't have. Uh, I would be amazed, but uh, it's it's kind of like the XKRS GT, which is in the high threes also. It should be significantly lower if it could put the power down, but it just never happens because the, the rear end's so free spinning. Uh, Driving it on the back roads, of course, let's let's talk about the track first. Um, I'm not driving it on the track. Everything's irreplaceable on this car, and it's not really made for the track. It's it's over 4,000 pounds. It feels like a heavy car. Uh, it, it looks small, especially with the top off, but it's actually a bigger car than you would think. Uh, and I, although I'm sure that... Uh, Maybe Chris Harris has driven it on the track. It's not something you probably want to do with it. It's more of a back roads cruiser, uh, but it's definitely not something for a tail to drag in or keeping up with some uh, 911s or something of that nature because it's not going to do it. I actually did a drive not long ago with a buddy of mine that's got an R8, another one that's got a GT3, and uh, I just couldn't keep up with them. I was having to straighten out the curves, and uh, it just... it. It's so tend it tends so much to oversteer that it's uh, it doesn't do very well on snap turns going left and right in in a, like a chicane something in a rapid succession. Uh, you can usually pull them in somewhat when you get a straightaway, but that's not what it's for. It's more of a a touring car that's fun to drive. You can drive it uh, aggressively. But it's not something that you're going to race other cars with. That's not what it's about. The 
This is just an introduction to the Project 7. I've already put, I bought this car in November. It was still seven years old and it had 303 miles on it. Uh, actually, the guy I was bidding against said, uh, keep the miles under a thousand because he was going to buy it from me in uh, five years or so. And I said, well, you better buy it in the next three months. And uh, truth be told, I've, it's got, I'm just about to turn over 1,800 miles on it in August. So I'm, I'm probably going to put close to, uh, I don't know, close to 2,000 miles on it this year. It's a little bit more than I normally put on the car. We've got six cars plus the SUV and the truck. Uh, and I like to spread the miles out on the rarer ones, but I think you should drive these at least a thousand miles a year. So that's kind of our goal. So I think it's pretty cool to have the Project 7 and have it in the company of the Project 8 and the XKRS GT. I'll also do another video on the, the differences in the driving experiences with these cars. They all have the same 5 liter, 550, well actually that's not true. They all have the same 5 liter supercharged V8 engine. Uh, but they they have uh, they deliver different power and they certainly deliver it in different ways. Uh, they're all completely different driving experiences, as similar as the cars really are. So, what do you guys think about the Project Seven? Leave your comments down below. Which do you like best? If you had, if you could only choose one, the Project Eight, the Project Seven, or the XKRS GT, which car would be your favorite? Uh, yeah, leave your comments down below and uh, do us a favor if you don't mind. And don't forget to subscribe, click the notification button, and check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And while you're at it, uh, if you don't mind checking out Full Octane Insurance, uh, we offer collector and classic car insurance. And uh, the prices are very reasonable and it's customizable for your specific application. And if you, uh, you want to see some more pictures and video, jump over to Driving with Melissa on Instagram and Facebook. That's our bigger social media pages. And uh, we post a lot more there that might, you might not see on YouTube. Again, thanks for joining us at the Full Octane Garage. We'll see you soon.